Okay, this is the ICOM IC720. These were circa about 1980, I think, something like that. Great little radio. There's a few things that annoy people like this uh, internal rotary drive on the band selector. It's a little noisy and that sort of thing, but otherwise these are great radios. They have uh, good receiver sensitivity, uh, nice clean transmitter, uh, operates uh, CW, AM, sideband, and uh, ready. And it's got a function button here. You can tap that and you can have it to switch to a CW NARA if it has a NARA filter, which this one doesn't. Or you can tap function this SSB reverse. This radio typically chooses the correct sideband for the band you're on. So if you're on 160, um, 160, 80, 40, it automatically chooses lower sideband. Anything above that is upper sideband. It also has a, a general coverage receive in it so that you can uh, you can listen to a lot of cool shortwave stations and things. Uh, there are some adjustments up top here. Um, and there's a little legend inside that tells you what's what. The CW monitor is how loud your CW side tone is. Frequency set is a neat feature on this thing. The rest of that stuff is self-explanatory. But the frequency set pot, this one. Uh, what that allows you to do is to dial in your uh, to dial in your uh, frequency display to match the actual operating frequency. I've adjusted this one, but you know over time rigs drift, things move. So if you're on uh, operating on the air and you know that uh, everybody's on, I'll just say uh, 7251, but your dial's not showing that, just tune in until it sounds correct set 7251 and you're ready to go that's a it's a good way to handle that and it works real well uh this thing has three tuning speeds which is very handy this radio always defaults to a base frequency on each band so if you're on 40 meters and you go to to uh, 80 meters i'm gonna turn power on here so it always starts on it will always start on uh 7.100 7 on 40 meters. When you change bands, this is up and down band. When you change bands, it goes to a default frequency. If I move that to another frequency, and I go to a different band and I come back, it goes back. So there's some things you can do. If you know you want to speed on across the band and go somewhere, this little button right here is tuning speed. It illuminates a little TS indicator here. Okay, so when you do that, it blinks that last digit. See that digit go away? And she really flies in. Well, you can zip across the band. Now, when you turn that back on, you have two more speeds. You've got 100 hertz resolution or 10 hertz resolution. So currently, with the button out, it's at 100 hertz resolution. If I go to 10 hertz, it's really slow. So that's nice to fine tune, you know. So that's some handy, handy bits. Once you're where you want to be, this is a lock button for your dial. See, D lock comes on. Nothing you do, it does not change frequency. So, all right. So right now it's on over in the afternoon. So I'm going to come down here on uh, 40 meters. It is on VFOA. See that it says lower side band is automatically selected. VFOA. Here's your VFO button. A B. A B. All right. And the manual explains more in detail. So it's on lower side band VFOA. I'm going to turn that on and move I'll move up a little ways. And so then we'll find someone on here. Sound like a little reading. He's 31, 32 years old. When I, I got my ticket at half hour. See how easily it tunes. It's a little faster. So, all right, we've covered that. It's got a RF gain control. I normally operate that wide open. That's just me. This has a neat passband tuning feature, the inner knob.
the advantage of that is if you've got somebody slightly up or down frequency on you, you can tune that, you can turn that back and forth and it changes the shape of your pass band so you can kind of give yourself a little extra ejection. Next thing, the outer part of that is the RIT, the receiver incremental tuning or receive fine tune. If I turn that on, it just changes the receive frequency. And as soon as you touch the knob, that little red light goes off. See that? Boop. There is a mod so that you can force it to stay on, but this one doesn't have it installed. Uh, attenuator is about 20 dB. So if you got a lot of atmospheric noise, you can punch that in. They're still there, but it, it, turned, it turned the receiver down quite a bit. This is your RF and ALC. That lets the meter operate for receive signal strength. Well, if it's pushed in, it will show up. Oh, excuse me. When it's pushed in, it shows power out. Let me get away from those guys. Hello, hello. And then I've got the power down here. Let's say I'll turn it off, and it's just ALC. I had that backwards. Hello, hello. That's power. That's ALC. And you can see your ALC range on the bottom of the scale. The, the manual will walk you through that, uh, how to properly set that. Okay, let's see. It's got a receive noise blanker. It's kind of hard to tell when it's on or off as far as functionality. This particular radio, I've got one of the, I've got the 211, which is the VHF all mode. It matches this, and it's um, it's basically pulse type interference, electric fence, a lawnmower engine, things like that. Um, RF power, I have it all the way up, and that is with the compressor off. If you click back. Compressor goes from minimum to maximum, and that's something you'll just have to play with depending on what microphone you're using. I click it all the way on, it's uh, powers all the way up, and the compressor's turned off. Mic gain, same thing with the stock hand microphone. I run the mic gain all the way up too. Okay, so let's see here. We'll change bands. See, it defaults to that. I'm just going to run through this one more time here so you'll see. So we're at 3600, I'm going to go up into 3900 range. I'm going to turn that t tuning speed up, and we're going to jump right up the band. And there we are. Boy, I mean, it really goes fast. 3915 is a popular frequency around here. And 3940, 48 or so. Okay. I think that covers about everything there. CW, your CW delays and such are under this cover. There is a screw under here, a little silver screw under the bottom of the cabinet, and that adjusts the tension on the knob. I've got it set so it spins fairly freely. Some people like it to spin, uh, have some resistance, you know, but that's me. Um, short wave, if you go to the uh, general coverage, if you push that in like that, it defaults to 15 megahertz. Most shortwave is on AM. And there's WWV in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm in North Carolina. So, in one megahertz steps, you change band and go down. This time of day, if you do any shortwave listening, you'll find that you have a lot of, um, you'll find that you have a whole lot of um, shortwave. Boy, I've got some power line interference. It's horrible. Around nine, 10, 11, 12 megahertz. Efforts. The total population is more than 300 and reside in California's central okay, coast. Okay, so Arizona, there you have it. California. I'll go back to the ham bands, and she's good to go. Hope that helps. Uh, it's, a lot of folks have never seen a 720, and it's uh, they're, they're great little radios, 100 watt transmitter, and they uh, really can't beat them.